Do I have to be a star? I mean, what if I'm not a star? What if I'm a worm? What if the greatest thing I can imagine is spending the whole day eating dirt? I feel excited when I managed to slither all the way up the driveway to get to the mud hole. The sun was so hot, I thought I'd shrivel into a toothpick. Some kid started charging at me like he was Superman about to save the world from annihilation. Thank God his mother screamed at him to get into the house before I got squished. ready to leave the world today. There must be a reason. Why did he make me eat dirt all day? At least if I were a caterpillar, I could turn into a butterfly and see the world. No, worms don't talk. They don't imagine. And they don't dream. They just do what the creator decided they should do. And you are not a worm. You can speak, you can imagine, and you can dream. You are not destined to eat dirt all day. If your thoughts have dropped to where you feel, you have no more significance than a worm, it's time to get out of the mud hole. What are you feeling today? Tick all the appropriate boxes. Sad, depressed, lonely, afraid, angry, jealous, resentful, anxious, disgusted, grief, self-abuse, unsupported, humiliated, overwhelmed, bitter, ashamed, insecure, unloved, unwanted, insignificant, unimportant, helpless, worthless, lost, inner conflict. If you ticked any of the boxes, don't worry. The mud hole is as old as Cain. We all experience at least one of these emotions at some time or other. If you're struggling with any of them, there are many gifted people with wonderful ways to get you out. But for now, ask yourself this question. What would a normal person do if they fell in the mud? Wash it off. Mud is easily washed off. Negative emotions are just as easily cleansed. However, there's a big secret why we don't take that spiritual shower. What's the big secret? All negative feelings serve us in some way. Let me say that again. All negative feelings serve us in some way. We are getting some benefit from the negative emotion. The negative emotion is fulfilling some basic need of ours. When we discover what need is being met by the negative emotion, we can choose to fill the need in a better, positive way. What do you really want in life? All people have seven fundamental needs. Security, variety, significance, connection, love, growth, and contribution. Break through the limiting patterns that block love and passion. Be your best every day. Change the lives of people for the better. Bring more joy, gratitude, compassion, excitement into the world. Imagine 3,000 people filling the auditorium all waiting anxiously to hear the next words to come out of your mouth. Words that will inspire, uplift, spark the imagination, create new connections, dreams, sense of hope and excitement. Imagine facilitating exercises that will help your audience communicate better with each other, healing relationships, strengthening businesses, contributing towards world peace in your own small way. That's nice, I like that. Wait, if I'm a star, I'll be in all the magazines. Everybody will talk about me and want to know everything about me. They'll tell stories and make fun of me and take away my privacy. They'll find ways to hurt me and pull me down. People can be really cruel and horrible. 
I don't want to go out into the world. I want to stay where it's safe. What about my kids? How will it affect them? What if I have to travel? Who will look after them? What if I get too tired? What if I get on stage and can't think of anything to say? What if I sound stupid? What if someone asks me a question and I can't answer them? What if I have all these great ideas and it's all an illusion and I'm totally incapable of being anything other than what I am right now? I think I'll stay in the mud hole. And keep your kids in there with you? Look, you obviously love your children very much. What kind of life do you want them to live? What kind of attitudes towards life and people do you want them to have? Do you want them to live with fear? To hide and stifle their talents? What kind of example do you want to be for them? What actions do you take when you're fearful? What do you focus your thoughts on? What do you tell yourself? Let me remind you of a story. There once was a young man named David who went to the camp of the armies of Israel to bring his brother's food. When he got there, he saw a very disturbing sight. Across the battlefield stood a giant, Goliath, champion of the Philistines, challenging and mocking the armies of the Israelites. It wasn't Goliath's size and his armies that disturbed David, it was the reaction of the Israelites. They cowered in fear before this giant, sure of their imminent destruction. But David saw a different picture. He saw a man boasting against God, and this was totally unacceptable. So with faith and courage, he spoke up and said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David went out and defeated the giant, not by any might of his own, but by the will of God. David said to Goliath, You come to me with a sword, spear, and shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David didn't care how well armed the giant was, because David was armed with the living God of Israel, a force that could withstand any opponent. We can be equipped with that same God today, and overcome any enemy we're faced with, if we'll only trust in that power as David did. When the world of unbelievers ridicule us for our beliefs, when temptation comes knocking at our door, when we're struck with tragedy in our lives, we can put our trust in God who will fight alongside us and help us overcome even the largest of giants this world has to offer. So David, what are you going to do to arm yourself with the living God of Israel? Wouldn't you love to feel a force that could withstand any opponent? How will you do that? Mm, become religious? David, doing things for my husband is not what makes him my husband. I am connected to him, and therefore I do things for him. God is our Father, and you are connected to him. Let me teach you a way to feel that connection more. Follow the steps on the next few pages. Set your intention. For a moment, think about what you want most in life. Now write down what it is so that you make it more fixed in the world. And write why you want it. What's the reason you want it? What's the point? Draw a circle around what you wrote, and then put the piece of paper away and forget about it. Open your soul. Enjoy this experience. Don't be concerned about doing it right. Just relax. Get comfortable in a sitting position. Close your eyes, but stay awake. Now, exhale all the air from your lungs. Breathe in while counting to five in your mind. One, two, three, four, five. Then hold for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe out for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Hold for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Do this about four times. If you do it slowly, it should take about two minutes. 
without judgment, notice how you feel. Write it down. Pure love. Get comfortable in a sitting position. Close your eyes, but stay awake. Think of a specific moment when you felt loved by or loved for someone. Now, think of another specific moment when you felt loved by or loved for someone. Next, think of an awe-inspired moment you experienced out in nature. Think of a time when you felt a holiness, a purity in your soul. Where were you? Now, think of either another awesome moment in nature or a moment of holiness and purity. Keeping your eyes closed, spend about 5 to 10 seconds remembering again when you felt loved by or love for someone. See it. Feel it. Experience it. Now remember the second specific moment when you felt loved by or love for someone. Still with your eyes closed, spend 5 to 10 seconds remembering the awe-inspired moment you experienced out in nature. Remember when you felt holiness and the other awesome moment in nature. Continue to remember them for about 2 minutes. Great, now, without judgment, notice how you feel. Write it down. As you think about the previous experience, the love within them all, the awesomeness within them, be aware that there is a source behind all the love. If you believe this, it's totally great. If you don't believe it, it's also totally great. Now, imagine for a moment that the reason you exist, the reason you are conscious, the reason you came into being at the beginning of all your lives, and that you exist now, is because the divine, the infinite light, is choosing and willing your existence right now. He is pouring his light into you because he loves you. He does it only because of all that you are, all that you can be, despite all that you may have done in the past. It doesn't trouble the infinite source of light, love, and compassion. The Divine Presence is dwelling within you. Waterfall of Light Okay, are you ready for more? Let's go. Get comfortable in your chair. Imagine an infinite light above your head pouring down over you and around you. This light adores you and it's swirling around you. It's the light of the Divine Presence around you and it comes down into your head and fills you. It fills and heals, releases and expands your mind. It comes down and fills and heals, releases and expands your heart. It comes down further into your limbs, your arms, your hands, your legs and feet. It increases all around you like a waterfall, swirling around you with love. You are loved beyond your capacity to comprehend. Keep your eyes closed and continue to imagine it. Feel it. Double it. Triple it. Feel it more and more intensely. Receive it. Say yes, you want more. And allow yourself to feel it. Choose it and believe it. Bask in the light of this love.
take a deep breath and open your eyes. Great! Now, without judgment, notice how you feel. Write it down. The more you do this practice, the more your soul will be energized and you'll feel how the God of Israel is truly with you. To feel fully alive and fulfilled, align your thought, speech, and action with the universal foundations of the Creator. Then you will ride on the King's highway of life and not ramble over some rocky, uncharted terrain full of snakes, scorpions, weeds, and poison ivy. There's a well-known story from the Bible that when the serpent tempted Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, its punishment was that it had to crawl on its belly and eat the dust. So what's so terrible about that? It always has food. We, on the other hand, have to labor all day long to earn our bread. Why did the Creator choose to provide the serpent with unlimited nourishment? The Talmudic sages decided to ask the Creator, and he answered, now, I never have to hear from him. The Creator is available 24-7. He is waiting to hear from you. Speak to him daily. God, now I know why I should be a star. Because that's what I am. <laughs>